Hi, I'm Master Trooper Gary Cutler. And I'm Sergeant Blake White with the Colorado State Patrol. And this is the Colorado State Patrol podcast. And uh, this is another great one here. I always like that. So we are moving up. Um, we're actually going to have uh, Dan Daru from Fox, and he's uh, done a story on us, and he's also going to allow us to interview him. And so I look at it this way. We're actually newscasters now because we're doing his job, right? No, I wouldn't say we're doing his job. I would. Well, I, I think we can do it. I mean, because look at this. I, you know, I-70, four, uh, well, let's this. Yeah, although oh, no, that okay, was great. That well, was perfect. I can try it again. No, hold, hold on, take. I, I'm going to do this. This is going to happen, okay? Uh-huh. Four car crash on I-70, news at 11. How's that? That's that's fantastic, Gary. Fantastic. I, well, you try it. No, I I'm good. I mean, I could do like the weather, but it, I don't have my green screen, so you're like a newspaper guy. Colorado State Patrol podcast. Troopers with a microphone. Now we're in for it. It's roads less travel with Blake and Gary. I think they're ready. All right, so uh, I'm I'm not the newscaster I thought I'd be, but uh, we are going to have some fun here. Dan Drew from Fox 31 is here with us, and what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of give him a little test um and i'm really excited about this the colorado state or the colorado state driving manual i guess is the way to put it. i should yeah, probably I read it first but it's a <laughs> you colorado. probably should read it I, yes. I hope you know what's in there i, I know what's in there. Um, i just don't know what's called okay that's so, right that's okay right. <laughs> but it's the the colorado driver handbook and what we're going to do is uh we're just going to be asking questions of him of what uh, what kind of knowledge he has of driving and whether we have to follow him after this or something. Is this like whose line is it anyway, so, though, where the points don't matter as far as the questions that we're asking well, you? Because I, I don't know who he's, who he's competing against. Him, himself. You know. <laughs> so, Dan, how are, you, how are you doing today? Uh, first, a little clarification. Did you say the show's moving up because you have me on it? I, I think uh, I think he made a mistake. He said that it's moving <laughs> up having you on, but sure we'll see. You know, okay, yeah. just making sure Don't let it go to your head, Dan. Just a little clarity, clarity. He's yeah. no Tim Allen or anything like that, you know. <laughs> but, but you are like, you know, I'm excited that uh, you wanted to join us on this. So I'm, I'm happy I really didn't this. want to, but I'm here. <laughs> so I'm no, so we're going to enjoy this. Um, so are you ready to, to do some basically standard driving questions here. You know, I are you ready am for that? ready. And if I fail, nothing happens. I mean, there's no consequences if I fail this test or like I said, so we, we may wanna... send somebody that follows you for a while to make sure that you know the rules. But yeah, okay. other you just that... want to showcase the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm uh, pretty stupid, but that's OK. <laughs> but we believe in you, Dan. Yeah. All right. So this is what I've done. Uh, I have taken basically anybody that's going to take a test in Colorado to drive. They're going to go through that driver's manual. And so I just took uh, 10 questions. So the way we're going to do this is uh, I and I did it very poorly, but there's 10 questions. Each one's worth one, except I have one that's worth three. And then I've given you uh, four bonus questions. So we have a total of 22 possible points. OK, I just want you to get to. But again, the points don't matter. Yeah. I just so, want to throw that out there, you know, just like whose line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, after all that said, we're, we're going to try this. Okay. okay. And uh, I just want you to get the 10 points. So I hope you do on this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that nice all right. So first question here, yes. can you renew your driver's license over the internet? And I'm going to say yes. And do you know why and how I know that answer? We're how? waiting. How? Because I've got my photograph, I could show you, but uh, it's at the post know, office. That's about ten years old, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and I just keep renewing it, and it's awesome because I'm forever young, thanks to the Colorado state laws. Okay, and and that's actually important right now, especially in the uh, pandemic age. Yeah, COVID and COVID has adjusted this a little bit. Let's it say has. that they've kind of uh, tweaked the rules slightly recently, but in general, yes, you can re- renew over the internet, mm-hmm. but. But you have a two limit time on that. So you actually uh, have to go in at some point and get uh, new pictures and stuff, you know, so that we don't have a young uh, Dan Daru there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that ship sailed. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and you still got to get your eyes checked to make sure that, you know, you can actually see. Well, I got mm-hmm. two well, of them. <laughs> that's, that's a step in the right direction. All right. Well, he's <laughs> off to a good start. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> One point. One okay. Point. So, All right. Yeah. So now I'm going to take the next one. All right. Ready, Dan? <laughs> yes, Sergeant. All right. So let's re- let's talk about the seatbelt law. So who in a vehicle? Just let's just go real broad. Who in a vehicle has to be seatbelted? Yeah. And this is a three point question. Oh, three points. Three Ooh. points. Three points possible. Yes. I'm going to say, what is everybody? I like your enthusiasm. I like the answer, but incorrect, unfortunately. Yeah. So if you're in the, let's start off, let's go with front seat. If you were in the front seat, 
driving or passenger, you need to be wearing your seatbelt. Unfortunately, in uh, you know the back seat, you don't necessarily need to be wearing your seatbelt unless what? Let's take a guess. So if you're in the back seat, what would make the stipulation of that you have to wear the seatbelt? If you're a wild, uncontrollable photographer near me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by that yeah. much. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, if you're a minor in the back seat, then you need to be wearing a seatbelt. Okay. Um, but like, okay. we recommend that everybody wears a seatbelt, regardless yes. of your seating yeah. position, because you can become a projectile in the back seat just like you can in the front seat. So yes. it's definitely a good reason to wear it. But mother in laws never have to wear seatbelts in my cars. <laughs> <laughs> just my own personal rule. If she's if she's in the back seat legally, yeah. you're correct. Yeah. 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 It's you're hard right. to put a seatbelt when she's on the hood. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to follow you after this show, you know. <laughs> oh, I've already got his plate number. We're good. Okay. And then there's the uh, third part there, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Which third mm -hmm. part? That's the part where if you have somebody under the age of 18 driving. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So if you if you have a uh, driver, say they're 16 years old, does that change anything? In, in what regards? As far as seat belts, does that change who has to be belted in? No. Yes, it does. Yes. I mean, yes. 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 Great answer. Great answer. Yes, yes, you got it, it right. It changes a lot. <laughs> it does. Everybody has to be seat belted if you've got a minor driver. That's right. Um, everybody. So great thing for those new drivers. Uh, obviously, there's some graduated driver's license laws that they should know as they're becoming new drivers, but everybody in that car needs to be restrained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in a way, he got the answer correct yeah, on the yeah, first yeah. one. He just didn't know that he was talking. He about misheard minors. me. Well, yeah, he must have missed. So yeah. we'll give you another yeah. point. So he's he's got two so far. Right, so right, eight right. to go here. Yeah. I think he's doing all pretty right. well on this so far. So, all right. Are you ready for question number three? I'm, I'm ready, Master. All right. What does an orange triangle on the back of a vehicle mean? It means that you should be cautious because there's something on that vehicle that's dangerous. Well, you're getting it somewhat right. Uh, I think you're getting a com uh, confused with what we have on semis for the something dangerous there. But what it means is that you have a slow moving vehicle. So it's for vehicles that are 25 miles an hour or less. And you can't have those, you know, on your vehicle like that if you're tooling around, you know, driving all over the place. It's specifically for those vehicles that could be a hazard while you're on the road. Mm -hmm. So that's something good to know there. Okay. I don't know if you've been out to like Amish country, Dan, where they have the- uh, I grew up uh, Amish. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, that makes it easy. So you remember the triangle and, yes. on the mm -hmm. back. There's nothing carriage. like an old fashioned barn <laughs> raising to bring out the soul in a man. Right. So that... and don't worry, just step in front of the camera. <laughs> You're fired. Oh. He's union. We can't. What can I say? It, it's live, right? It's, so. it's, it's absolutely terrific. Oh, that's, that's good one then. there, though. So, all, all right. right then. All right. So I've got a. Uh, I Thank got a, you to United Way. It works for all of us. <laughs> all right. This is a. Uh, this is one that we hear about a bit, and uh, I think it's a good one for you. When merging onto a highway, who has the right of way? And when I say who has the right of way. You've got the vehicles traveling down the highway and you got a vehicle merging onto the highway. Who out of that has the uh, right of way? Well, he didn't have the right of way, I'll tell you that, because <laughs> he was merging right in front of that camera. Uh, it's the vehicles on the highway have the right of way. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, and that's, a, that's a big one. So if you're going to be merging onto the highway, you are responsible to merge safely. Mm -hmm. um, how about this one? Mm -hmm. Do you call that that lane that they're coming in? Is that a merge lane or acceleration lane per the driver's manual? Oh, I threw in a curveball. This curveball. is a bonus one though, so. Uh, you, know. you gotta make up those points. Yeah. God, it seems like it'd be a little of both. See, and that's what I said, I, uh, I agree. Cause you are definitely merging. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna say merge. So per the driver's manual, it's an acceleration lane. And I think the reason they call that wow. is because you were supposed to accelerate up to right. the speed of traffic. Oh, that's true. And, and safely merge over. But yes, you're merging. And as you go, there's also a merge area. Mm. Um, so don't cross over that solid white line. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's yes. that's one that we see all the time. I'm sure you have probably seen people just get impatient and they have to shoot over and then they're causing more issues. So make sure you're not crossing over that white line. That's when I normally yeah. tailgate them and honk my horn just to educate them on their errors on the highway. You know, that's probably, uh, Dan, I wouldn't say that's necessarily <laughs> the best way to educate, uh, to tailgate oh. and honk the horn. We, I think we've had those calls on you, oh. actually, on our line. All right, I'm sorry. Yes. On your education. Okay, I'm sorry, Sergeant, I won't so, drop your name next time. <laughs> yeah. 
I, it won't get you anywhere. I think we're bumping that up to two patrol cars that are going to be behind it now. So <laughs> yeah, we, we might, might as well just have like a whole, whole squad on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's probably for everybody's safety. All right. So, okay. I'm, I'm going to give him one point on that one there. One so. and a half. Give him a half. One and a half. Yeah. One and a half. That was pretty good. Is Thank it, you. Trooper, it, okay. On. One and a half. Is that half a pity point or is that you feel like no, I think it doesn't matter. He'll got take it. Yeah. He'll take it. Okay. All right. So. All right, so this is another one, and I, I think a lot of people probably don't know this one, um, and it's it's confusing when you look at it as well. But anyways, let's say, Dan, you're uh, driving down that narrow mountain road, uh -huh. and uh, you come across a car. So you're going down it, another vehicle is coming up, but it's a very narrow road, so only one vehicle can pass at that point. Who has the right of way? Who would have to either move over or back up? Ding, 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 ding. Dan. Uh, the, the vehicle going downhill has to yield to the vehicle going uphill because it's safer to back up than it is to back down, especially if it's a steep grade. It's more dangerous to back downhill. It's safer to back uphill to a spot where you go past Wow, he just that, I'm sure that bam. was even the explanation of it. I that know. was that was the best one. I didn't even have to say anything about it. So, okay, now that my big good. question is, how do you know that? Because I have mountain property. Oh, perfect. and <laughs> let it be known that I used to hunt when in my younger days, uh, I did a lot of hunting in the Rocky Mountains and we were, were down lots of roads and we learned that really quick, especially outside a rifle in the Roan Cliffs. You learn it real quick, and especially when people are coming up and I was like, hey, get out of my way. And I go, Tsh, don't you know Colorado State <laughs> law, boy? Uh, uh, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, you're driving up here. Oh, driving up. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, we got Clint like, Eastwood yes. in the studio with we us. We do. Well, you know, he did such a good job on that. I'm giving him two points on that one. That oh, was geez. only a one pointer, but he gave yeah, the extra. He's just getting freebies too. now. I know. All right. You know, All right. So here's one for you, Dan. And I'm going to give you this is, I'm going to even make it super easy for you. So if you're coming <laughs> upon a vehicle, whether coming from approaching them head on or behind them, mm -hmm. two different answers. I'm going to give you that hint there. Mm -hmm. When do you have to, within how many feet do you have to dim your high beams? Oh, I haven't nary a clue. I mean, I'd just be guessing. I don't know. Yeah, we'll take a guess. Couple what hundred you feet? Couple hundred. All right. That's, <laughs> that, that that's a, that that's a broad be... answer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's couple something. hundred? I would, what is that? 200? 200. Outstanding. All right. 200 feet if you were coming from behind. That's how much, uh, how close you can be when you need I got to dim right? high beams. What? Well, yeah. Yeah. It will right, give it. Yeah. But it's different when you're approaching. Okay. So if you're coming toward them, you're 500 feet. So you okay, get a little bit sense. of distance. But just be courteous is the big thing. And I know a lot of cars now have the uh, auto high beams, and those can be kind of finicky. Um, mm -hmm. But just make sure, as especially as cars get brighter as well with yes. headlights, um, just be courteous and dim those. Why are sightings. automobile manufacturers making the headlights look like they're mean? You ever seen that? Where they I, they have this uh, the, the styling on the vehicles. If you're driving, you look in your rear view or side view. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like the car's angry at you. I don't like. Do, that. do you have the eyelashes on your vehicle? You know that you know make it more into a face. Have you seen those? The eye, the headlight, well, headlight. I don't eyelashes? see anything wrong with that. Those are usually yeah. on VW bugs. See, and I think, know, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. But I think it, you know, the front of a car in general looks kind of, you know, at times looks like a face. So I, I could see that. Like cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go with it. All right. You yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give him the uh, the bonus question on this Ooh, one. Yeah. Here. Okay. So you know, we got to have a few of these on mm -hmm. here for it. So. If you're driving down and it's daylight and everything, but we have a storm or something else happens and the visibility gets down to where you can't see very well, what amount of feet? So that's the, how many feet? And don't on say your a couple, Dan. Don't yeah, say don't a couple. couple feet. Yeah. yeah so when your visibility gets down to how many feet do you have to turn on your headlights? Yeah, down to, can I phone a friend? Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Why not? Uh, I don't have any friends. So <laughs> uh, wow. I, I'm going to say down to 100 feet. Well, you definitely would have to do that, but we'd like you to do it more, maybe 10 times that. So 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet. Okay. Yes. 1,000 feet goes pretty quick when you're driving. So that's yeah, why you have 1,000 feet on that. So how do I measure that? Do I have to stop, honey? Where's my 1,000 foot <laughs> measuring tape? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what you need to do. Yeah. So I, I basically, the way I, I like to tell people is just when you start to see things, you know, getting a little hazier or it's a little tougher to see out there and you're starting to worry about whether it's vehicles or somebody on the side of the road or something like that, 
you know, I mean, because they have daytime running lights now, you know, and that's definitely something that has really helped, I think, because people are spotting cars a lot quicker yep. and that's helped us out. And so anytime you get to where, you know, you start to see, you know, your visibility dropping, I think that's a good time to turn those on. I would agree. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, Dan. Now I know you're a busy guy, but in Colorado, can you drive while you're on your cell phone? Uh, no. Hello. What are you guys? Are you, what's in your coffee cup? Are you guys crazy? Yes, you can. Oh, really? Yes, you can. Oh, I you thought can you meant use texting. your cell phone. No, okay, texting. Texting is a different thing, but in general, could uh, you talk on your cell phone? Yes, currently you can. Um, wow. Uh, okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. No. You can. But now, how do you differentiate talking from texting? That's got to be hard for you guys. Because someone could be like this. So I think that's, a, that's one that I've seen, actually, is I've seen the you drive next to them and they're texting and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, they see you and then they put it up like they're on the phone and they were making a phone call, which they clearly weren't. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, that is something that we see, but we're also looking at their other driving and looking at their weaving and their varying speeds and and just watching their focus. I think that's what we see regardless if they're talking or texting and that's the big issue. Yeah. yeah. But is there somebody that can't talk on the phone while they're driving? Uh, yeah, there is actually a couple answers and I, I will. Okay. Yeah. So mm, that's a tough one. Uh, is there an, it would be either an age group, uh, maybe that we talked about on a previous answer that can't use a cell phone while they're driving. That's a big hint. Yeah. What are you talking about? No, no, no other way. <laughs> no! Other way, Dan. Other way. Ageism. No, no. Go, Ageism. Go, go toward the younger group. Yeah. We don't pick on the old people. Oh, here. minors. <laughs> we don't pick on Gary. Uh, yeah. minors, minors. Yes, there you go, minors. That's exactly not the Colorado school of mines. No, no, but minors, or not gold miners, mm -hmm. and not gold yeah. miners or gold Correct. diggers. Correct. Correct. Yes. We're That's... talking about minors of 17, 16 year old drivers. They cannot be on the cell phone. Okay. And again, because they're such new drivers, we don't want another thing thrown at them. We don't want any additional distractions because they already are trying to learn the rules of the road. Amen. And already overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah, no kidding. Yes. And everybody I've ever pulled over for any of these things, whether it's texting or minors talking on the phone, they all know it's wrong and yet they did it anyways, you know, and it's just, just not worth it. Yep. I would agree. You uh, mean making a law doesn't prevent someone from breaking it? <laughs> no, I, you know, and the biggest thing, and what we talk about, Dan, is, uh, you know, when we give out a ticket or a warning, what we're looking for is voluntary compliance of the law. And that is our end goal, regardless of that enforcement action that we may take, is to get that voluntary compliance. Because we really do rely upon drivers to obey the laws and keep themselves and others safe. We we can't, there aren't enough of us to enforce every law without everybody doing their part. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to read this one because if I don't read it, I'm going to mess it up. I'll probably mess it up anyways. All right. So when making either a left or right turn onto another road, does it matter which lane you turn into? If there's more than one going in that direction, you're turning. Yes, it matters what lane you turn into. Yes. See, you're saying yes because of the way he read it. Aren't no, you? of course you have you're to. Just, you're, yeah. <laughs> if you're turning right, you mm -hmm. got to turn into the number one lane. You can't go. Woo. I mean, number three lane. As if it's there, three. Yeah, there's there, three lanes. You can't, there you you go, can't yeah. turn into the number one lane. You can't go. Hey, right. you know what? I don't see any cars. Woo. Right. The lane closest to you to would you. be the other way to look yes. at it. Regardless exactly. of how many lanes Left or are. right. It's yeah. the same thing. Correct. So, <laughs> so he, he's reading off of what we're saying, but yeah, I think he's he's got it there. Uh, yeah, the, he's uh, spot on. Well, I'm yeah, teaching my kid know. to drive right yeah. now, which is terrible for him. But I mean, so we're going, <laughs> we're going through all that right yeah, now. Yeah, we'll tell yeah. him which ones you need to yeah, research really. here before you This is good. This that. is good for you then to pass yes. along your yes. expertise. Yes, yes. You he should watch this so he can figure it out and everything there to see how dad did. Yes. But yeah, so the way I always put it is you make a left turn, you're going to turn into the lane that's left, you know, and then you're going to turn into the right lane when you're making a right turn. And so that's the best way to do that. And then after you get into that lane, check for other vehicles, hit your turn signal to do your left or right, whichever way you're going, and then move over safely on that way. And if you have to go across two or three lanes, that's the way you do it. Same thing when you come onto a highway and you're merging, you don't go clear over to that fast lane and just try to take off on it. All right. Do you want to get this? Uh, is this a bonus question here too? So this is a bonus question. You can go ahead and give it All this right. one here. So we're, as we're talking about lane changes, Dan. Yes. How long in feet oh. do you need to signal when you're making a lane change? Uh, the, the feet questions. I don't like them. 
how many feet? Oh man, see that's, I'm guessing, I'm gonna say 100 feet. 100, 100 feet. I, I think that's, what do you think, Gary? Yeah, you know, he's he's got part of it, we didn't specify really. That's true. So um, I'll give him half on that. All right, so what's the difference in the, the why do you say we didn't specify? So we, we look at it in two ways. So we have the urban slash metropolitan area where you're driving along and you're going to be turning down, say, you know, another block or something like that. But if you get your speed faster than 40 miles an hour, so you have a road that's 40 miles an hour or faster, then you have to do it for 200 feet. And as a speed limit, not the speed that you were traveling at, Dan. That is the yeah. speed limit of the roadway. So it's a hundred. So I should not take offense at that. So I, well, I'm just letting you know, I could I could see it and, you know, see the wheels turning. But how, what, how do you handle it? You drive down the road and you signal and that's when the guy in the number one lane goes, mm, he really zooms up, it never fails. Yeah, sometimes I, I know what you're talking about, especially mm -hmm. in the metro area mm -hmm. where, you know, they start to see and they don't want that one car in front of them. <laughs> yeah, I'll then get behind them, give them that. Uh, it, it's not worth it. That's and when I tailgate and hit the line. <laughs> right. So that's All what right. we try to avoid. Oh, right? I mean, it's, it's that, you know, that, that road rage. But the, the second part of that, too, is also, and this is a part of the law, but also a very good safety rule, too. When you're going to make that turn. Hit your blinker on first before applying the brakes, because, you know, if you're driving along and somebody just puts their brakes on in front of you, you, yeah. you weren't expecting that. But if they have that blinker on, you know that they're going to be braking at some point to make that turn. And we want courteous drivers in Colorado. So we ask yes. that of everybody, regardless. I know Dan likes to tailgate and honk, um, you know, yeah. with, yeah, yeah. yeah. With um, but we ask for the courteous drivers. <laughs> I do it so with like, love. With <laughs> <laughs> A love tap on the horn, right? It's yes. a love tap. Yeah, a love right. tap is beep. The other one, mm, that's that's a little yeah. bit more. On that's right. That's right. That's <laughs> aggressive. All right. So we talked about kids and driving, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. let's say your uh, child's on a school bus mm -hmm. and uh, they're getting picked up. If you're going to come up behind that school bus with their lights flashing, how many feet back do you need to stop? With the feet question. I know. The feet ones are tricky. <laughs> they're really tricky. Uh, a hundred feet. No, let's say fifty <laughs> feet. Fifty feet. I like that. I like the more the more space. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's actually twenty feet. So it's actually 20 it's fairly feet. close. But that is yes. close. But you want to be far enough back where you can yeah. see the loading and unloading, yes. give them some space. Yep. I think that's really the key. So yeah, well, mm -hmm. twenty feet or more is, okay. is probably the best one. All so right, so yeah. where I'm right. I so, think yeah. I think technically yeah. he was right. Yeah. So. so number nine is he gave a safety answer. Oh, there did, we go. did you hear that? He's yes. not even giving you the points on Just, that. It's a thumbs up, but yeah, no points on it. So, <laughs> all right, Gary, get this final one. Here. All right, so you probably have plenty, dude. <laughs> I got a lot. All right, okay. So, question number ten, 10. is a four-part question. Oh. Yeah, I know, and uh, but I, I think I've got hope that you're going to get some of these, okay. if not all of them, right. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. this is the prima facie speeds, or what I like to call the law of the land speed. So basically what you should do, if you don't see any type of a speed limit sign on the roadway, there are set laws of how fast you can go on those roads. All right. So if you were on a narrow winding mountain highway, what would be that prima facie law on the speed? A hundred feet. <laughs> what is the speed limit? Oh. Speed limit on that. I, we're not going to default uh, to a hundred feet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, if it's windy, I want to say 35. 35, huh? Okay, 20. Oh! Yes. Yeah. Right. Here's, I want to get this next one because this one okay. actually, it always confuses me. So I'm going to get, this is a two part. Okay. A, again, the law of the land, as Gary refers to it, of the business district versus a residential area. Oh. What do you think each of those are? Oh, residential. Jeez. Uh huh. Yeah. No. Great answer. <laughs> residential. Yep. Well, I'm gonna say residential. I'm gonna say 20 residential. I'm gonna say 15 business. I like where your mind is at because it is <laughs> it is interesting that a business district is is lower. It's 25, 20. and residential is assumed at 30, 30, which I would think is the opposite. You know, because yeah. you're going that's into a neighborhood, you'd think that would be slower. Um, but it's yeah, it's 30. It's 30. That's unless fast. otherwise posted. This right. is assuming that there's no yes. speed limit posted. Most of the time there is one, but wow. if they don't post it, that is the speed limit for that's the area. That's fast. Yeah. yeah. yeah and see, quick. that's how we also, when we stop people and they're going, fast, well, I didn't see a sign. It's like, well, this is some of the stuff you were supposed to know when you got your license. And and there's a lot of times you will see a sign that says 
speed limit posted at this unless you see another sign. Uh -huh. And so you have those as well. Um, huh. And you know, other states are different too. Uh, in Utah, it was residential was 25. Hmm. You know, that's where I came from. So it was like, you have close. different ones on yeah. it. Yeah. So each state has a little bit different, but they are the set ones here on that. All right. All right. You got the final one here? I got the final one here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Urban highways or interstates, what would the prima facie speed be on that one? Urban highways. Uh, 65. 55. Yeah. What? You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. Unless right. posted otherwise. And it's, so, I mean, 55. yeah, most of the time it's going to yeah. be posted, Dan. There's not, I mean, <laughs> that's the big part of yeah, it. Yeah. You might see that low on some, you know, if you're more rural highways you know where you've got something and then it's 55 for quite a while or something and they just don't have something on there but so what is uh what is dan's final score 55 55 <laughs> well let's see it's going to take some math here for it yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I, I don't forget that half a point i gave him too yeah he's got a couple of half a points. points three points so uh does he win something i don't even know if you win anything dan Challenge if you... point would be nice, but... all right out <laughs> out of 22 possible points oh boy Dan got six and a half. What? Well, I mean, I want to speak to my attorney, please. <laughs> this conversation is over. This, yeah. I don't. I didn't think you did that bad. And no. I think I appreciate the fact that most of your answers were cautious, Dan. I, you know, I would rather have you be cautious than just go, yeah, no, yes. no rules and no laws matter, and you just don't know. So. Thank you, sir. Some of these are yeah. tricky. You know, we'll give you those. Mm -hmm. He's driving through residential areas slower. He's giving yeah, the kids exactly. on buses a lot more space See? than yep. required. So, so I, I call that a win. Yes. You know, yeah. I, would I mean, if we go by win. points, yeah. But, you know, I, I gave him, you know, the safety answer. I mean, he's got quite a few here that I think he did very well on. So, yeah. you know, and us, us old folks have to stick together. Who know, said so, that? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I didn't say it, man. If he's calling I, you old, I, I us old it. folks, yeah. I'm pretty darn sure I'm older than Dan anyway. So, well, know, I always like to say we're all circling <laughs> the drain. You know what I'm saying? No one's getting out of this show alive. <laughs> well, we'll let you this know, guy in here. He did. I know. We should have really screened him before this. <laughs> but, um, Dan, you know, we really do appreciate you coming in here and taking your time on this, uh, you know, and uh, having everybody from Fox come in here and, you know, spend the afternoon with us. And it, it's been great to kind of get an idea of, you know, how both sides operate. I've, I've always wanted to interview the interviewees. So, oh, you know, that's kind of a, a fun thing for us. And I'm really enjoying that. I'm glad you enjoyed it because that makes one of us. And these are, these are <laughs> tight quarters, you know, it's always a challenge. And so when we bring in both Dan and a photographer, I mean, it's uh, you'll, you'll kind of catch mm -hmm. it that we're, we're working in a very tight space. Uh, but we make it work, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it. You know, you are a test subject, really, Dan. Yeah, yes. like a guinea pig. Yeah, mm -hmm. you. Yeah, you basically, are. you are a guinea pig. Yeah, you know, and we did throw you under the bus here because we didn't tell you you were going to have any type of uh, questions here or anything like that. So the fact that uh, we hit it a pop quiz on you, and you know, when was the last time you had a pop quiz? Yeah, but were you at least twenty feet away from that bus when you threw me under it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> twenty feet. Twenty feet. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We're going to have to have him on again. <laughs> I need oh, money first. Oh my God. Yeah, we can't afford it, Dan. Uh, yeah, we only have free guests. And yes. That's why Tim Allen, Gary's yeah. dream is, is never, never going to happen. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. I don't know. He might be. There able you to go. go there, we so. could just say he's wearing a mask. We could yeah. say yeah. It's, we could say it's Tim yeah, Allen. Yeah, that's right. everybody. That's right. Exactly. Well, you guys are great too. We really appreciate what you do, seriously. I know my family and I appreciate what. Uh, God, what, what do you guys work for? Oh, yeah, State Patrol. Yeah. We really appreciate what the State Patrol does in Colorado. And maybe for folks that are watching right now, the next time you're driving on the highway and the byway and you see a State Patrol car off the side road, maybe you just think, like, wow, that guy or gal's doing it. And you know what? They're doing it for us. And they're just like you guys, maybe a little smarter. No, we appreciate that, you know, and uh, we hope Wait, everybody did, got it. Did you good just say that they were smarter than? Did you not what? catch what Dan just slid in there? Were you saying that those Ooh. guys are smarter? But than I didn't say Dan? anything. What are you oh, talking I, about? I missed that completely. I was thinking the next thing. See, I was he's say. he's taking it as a compliment. Then I heard that little slide oh. in right at there at the end. It's, it's a okay. term of endearment when we criticize. Okay. You know, I feel like we we quizzed him already, but Six I feel points. like we should interrogate him a little more after this. Bring it on, yes. Sergeant. Yes, I think we're gonna. Have so to I'm just gonna plead the. Yeah, sounds about right. All right. Well. With that being said, and me being a little slower than I used to be, um, we do uh, hope that you guys enjoyed the show this time. And we have really enjoyed uh, having Dan as our guest here. We'll be doing this again next month. Don't forget, uh, we're on Spotify, Stitcher. So we have uh, our audio on there. And uh, it's been a great time. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you next time. And safe travels. <laughs>